whole meeting for um, uh, April 22nd uh, to order. And um, we have to thank who we suspend um, uh, taking the role, or do we need to do that? All right, Ms. Banks, then uh, please call the roll. <laughs> Mr. Moore? Present. Mr. Moss? Here. Mr. Lamb? Here. Ms. Jordan again is excused. Mr. Frazier? Here. Mr. Fertiassi? Here. Mr. Steiger? Here. We have um, five members present. <laughs> All right. Um, so we have uh, four items to consider as the council. So I'm going to start with. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Charette. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council, Mr. Charette, and members of the audience. I'm very excited to be here this evening to discuss a proposal to bring the Smooth Jazz Fest back to its rightful home, the city of Southfield. In a meeting arranged by the Mayor's Office on March 28th, several city departments, including planning, business development, community relations, and parks and recreation, listened to a conceptual presentation by the gentleman that you will meet this evening. The staff feels that this signature event can make a successful return within the operational, security, and financial parameters indicated by the city. It is my pleasure to introduce Kenneth Marshall from WJZZ Digital. Good evening, Mr. Marshall. If you could give us your name and business address for the record. Kenneth Marshall, 41789 Mitchell is the uh, business address, Novi, Michigan, 4377. Thank you. Good evening. All right, Madam Mayor, Council, audience, it is an honor to be here to be able to present to you this evening. And bear with me, I hope I get the clicker thing <laughs> right. <laughs> Got it. Well, what a guess. What a guess. <laughs> All right. Um, just want to. I want to discuss very quickly and go through this presentation about bringing the Smooth Jazz Fest back. I think it's a, an important event. I think it was an important event for 10 years. Uh, and uh, it's a fun event. It's a type of event that brings people together. Uh, great music, hopefully, great food, all that sort of stuff comes with this event. So I'm going to start from the beginning. I hope I don't. If, I move, if I'm moving too rapidly, because I tend to roll through presentations very quickly to be efficient. Uh, a little bit about us. Uh, this, is, this is part of a 14-year journey. It started at the time when I was very irritated when they sold WJZZ. I was a big listener, big supporter of the station. It went away, and little old me at the time thought, you know what, how can we bring this back? And so it literally, it literally kind of launched 14 years ago. Fast forward a little bit. Uh, I got into the, the whole media business back in 2011, we really took it seriously. We decided to do not terrestrial radio, but because of the onslaught of digital radio, we decided to go that direction, simply because, first of all, worldwide focus, it's a lot easier, less costly, the certification process is simpler, and so we decided to move into the digital band. We started with the first station, which is WMMS Digital, which is Motor City Music Showcase Radio. Uh, that launched August 1st of 2011, followed it with uh, Motor City Gospel Showcase Radio that launched October 1st of the same year, 2011. Uh, this process with the jazz station took a little bit longer. We did a ton of research on the demand for jazz in the area, both digitally, worldwide, and all that <coughs> sort of stuff. And we, we decided uh, we're going to do Motor City Jazz Radio. And that's the original name. Now, how we got to WJZZ Digital was really up in my head because uh, for digital radio, they opened up the digital band for call letters just like you have on terrestrial radio two years ago. And so on a whim, literally, almost like saying, you know, <coughs> the only thing they can say is no, is we applied for the digital call letters for WJZZ. Oddly enough, they were, they were available. Uh, the audience has, has grown in numbers to about 100,000 
at, at the time of the presentation, it could be even more now. 39 countries. We play indie and mainstream smooth jazz artists 24-7. That's our domain at the bottom. And also, I don't know how many of you are familiar with TuneIn Network. You can get them on your iPad, on your iPhone, on your Android. You can get TuneIn everywhere, even on your desktop computer. Uh, and so that was the launching pad for all of this. Now, uh, in all of the planning for the station, it was always a vision. Why don't we do a jazz fest in cooperation with this thing actually coming back? Makes sense. Uh, you, you, you generate buzz for the station. You do, you, you do a lot of things. Good artist relations, uh, build listenership, all that sort of stuff comes with this kind of thing. So I said, you know what? Let's attempt to bring it back. And so just some preliminaries, we're, we're looking at doing this Friday and Saturday, August 9th and 10th, and you see the, the gate opening times and, and, and all of that sort of stuff. I'm going to just move through that because that stuff is self-explanatory. Uh, and we want to do it here. Now, uh, a little bit of history and why Southfield. Uh, first of all, B98.7, who you may have been familiar with, who was owned by CBS Radio, their format was changed. And so, again, we see another... We see another jazz entity just going by the wayside. And you have so many jazz lovers and listeners in the area. <coughs> uh, but they did this for 10 years in a row. Very successful event, very successful station, and sometimes I ask myself, why did they go away? Uh, but the format changed. Uh, we had, or they had, a total of between 3,000 and 6,000 folks, depending on the year. Uh, we were able to gather the data that the, the last year was the largest uh, attendance of 6,000. Uh, why Southfield? There's several reasons. Number one, it's an established history with this event. I mean, it's, it's, synonymous. it's synonymous. If you talk to anybody, they remember this. Uh, all the people we talked to, we did, we did unscientific stuff on Facebook, on Twitter. We put it out there, and people immediately were like, I remember that. I went to that. It was a great event. Everyone had great feelings about this event. So that's one reason. Accessibility via freeway, because you got to make a business decision. You want it to be easy for people to get to. And one of the most annoying things about events sometimes is parking. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest thing. Real quick side story, show you what I'm talking about. I went to Royal Oak for an event. Nothing, nothing against Royal Oak. But I had the most difficult time driving around the block until mm -hmm. somebody moved so I could park. So one of the one of the most attractive things about this city is it's easy to park. This is not an issue. And and for the venue we're talking about doing it at, at in the Civic Center area, there's just a lot of parking. When I would come to the, the fireworks, one of the easiest things about the fireworks, it's not a problem parking. And that's what people put in their minds too when they come somewhere. How easy it is to get to it. And then secondly, when I get to the location, can I actually park? And, that, and that's, that's a huge plus. The overall beauty of the site, it's a beautiful site. And especially with the backdrop of, of the library and everything, and you're going to have the stage, you're going to have everything. It's just a beautiful, beautiful backdrop. Uh, and, and you've got excellent city services. I think, I think everybody in the area would, would agree with that, police department and otherwise. It's a very clean city. So all of those things play a part in deciding what you're going to do as far as an event is concerned. Uh, some of the tentative lists of artists that have been con contacted already. Uh, one of the producers we're working with is a gentleman by the name of Daryl Williams uh, and his partner Paul Reiser out of Chicago. And they are, they are working on bringing in the talent. Some of these people have been contacted. Others have, have uh, not confirmed yet. Marion Meadows has confirmed. Bob Baldwin and Shelby Brown will be there. Uh, Kimmy Horn, we talked to Kimmy. Kimmy's yeah. anxious to come back. Uh, she did the last one in 2008, and she's raring to come back. So many of these artists are already are, are, have already been contacted, and, and there are more than this because you have to build a master list that's amazing because of people's schedules. You got to figure out who can come. Event <coughs> revenue. This is a paid event. One of the things about paid events is a couple of things happen with a paid event, and especially a jazz event. Number one, you're, you're going to get a specific audience. Uh, you're going to hit a specific audience. The audience is going to is going to be a little more mature. Uh, you're going to have less problems out of a more mature audience. 
Uh, and so the, re the event revenue side, we're going to do a couple of different packages, a one-day and a two-day. Uh, as you can see, the two-day package, VIP seating, uh, we have not settled on a price for B VIP setting uh, or seating just yet. Uh, but there'll be VIP seating as well. Sponsor support to help cover the expenses. Uh, we're going to have that. Sales of vendor opportunities, so we're going to get vendors out there who are going to want to uh, be out there as well. Uh, merchandise sales, we're going to print up a bunch of, a bunch of stuff just, just to commemorate the event, commemorative shirts, hats, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and also, the city's going to be charging a, sur a surcharge on ticket sales, so you're going to be selling them uh, as well uh, out of parks and rec. Uh, and I believe I've got the revenue numbers that we were, we were told that have been generated in, in the past. Okay. Uh, bear and wine sales are going to be, that's the projection for that. Th to tell you the truth, that particular number could be higher, could be lower. It's, it's just a projection. All right, our goal, and one of the things we want to do, is we're going to use Southfield businesses for this event. And the biggest one being... Pardon, yes. Sure. Stand over here. You understand? Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. All right. Pegasus Entertainment, who um, many of our event services team members are totally uh, uh, aware of and familiar with, is a very professional organization located in Southfield, right down in the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, they are an organization who knows how to do events. They do the Winter Blast. They do Arts, Beats, and Eats. They do some big stuff already. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to be uh, in negotiation with the Western Hotel for hotel rooms and things of that nature. Uh, and we're going to also use the Converter, I, Chamber of Commerce to identify other businesses that we can use for the things that we need for the staff. All right. All right. What you need to establish a festival, whether it's here or any other place, is you got to have the cooperation of city government, which we have received. Uh, and it's been excellent. I can I can say that up front. It has been a breeze, a beauty to deal with Southfield government. Uh, nothing hard about it at all. Uh, we've got the experienced production company. We've got the experienced event team. Uh, a comprehensive security plan. We've been talking already today with uh, representatives from Southfield Police about uh, a security plan for this event. Uh, solid sponsors and a solid lineup of national talent. All right. Uh, what we need from the city basically is parks and recs, the police department, uh, your public works, business development, and city plan. And again, we, we've already received cooperation from many of those groups. Uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, background on, on some of the setup and teardown, the event would be set up on a, on a Thursday morning. Starting at 8 a.m., Pegasus would come into the grounds and begin setting up the event, uh, prepping everything. Tear down or striking, as they call it, is Sunday morning, August 11th, after the event. Uh, and security will be provided by us in the overnight hours, so that uh, that doesn't for a it would be really rudimentary for your police department and thus unnecessary. So we'll provide security for those times overnight to, to guard the equipment. <coughs> Uh, getting back to Pegasus, over 30 years of experience in productions, and as you can see, just a list of the things that they actually do, and a complete list is available uh, on their website and on their Facebook page. Now, we've got an experienced team. I'm going to blow past mine because the other more important people are sitting in the back of the room. Uh, but that's a little bit about me. Uh, I've been in technology for a long time, uh, and uh, one of the most significant parts that that, that deals with events is my time with Promise Keepers uh, doing events with uh, the man you're going to meet back there who is like a, a big time mentor and that's why I brought him in. Uh, and so I want to get to those guys. All right, Randy Mason, if you would please stand. Randy Mason has uh, got 30 years of experience dealing with stadium events and all sorts of large events. Uh, and you'll see that I'll let you read that stuff in your in your packet, but he has well-rounded and very adequate event. I call him my mentor uh, because he has been uh, an amazing guy to learn from doing these type of events. Next person, Ken Daniel, uh, 25 years service with Michigan State Police. Ken, would you please stand and show yourself? Uh, Ken Daniels will be handling security. And again, you can see his qualifications uh, in your packet. 
Stage Logistics Manager Andrew Styles. Andrew, would you please stand? And you see the you see uh, you'll see stuff about Andrew and your package. Well, 15 years of event management experience, uh, and uh, uh, also service large clients like General Motors, Chrysler, Ford, Bosch, and Samsung. We got to have a food guy, and unfortunately, the food guy's not here. But he's a very important part of the team in, in making sure that the event staff and the police and uh, those that are uh, artists in the event are fed properly. He also has event experience with Promise Keepers in a large uh, stadium event environment. All right, um, safety, event safety and security. Uh, one thing that we talked about today is, is your police department uh, being in the lead, providing the guidance on how the security plan is put together. And so uh, they will work closely with Ken Daniel on formulation of a plan, and, and we will use or augment as, or as needed or as advised by the police department in a security pa uh, capacity, people that we will need. Projected total budget for this event is between $120,000 and $150,000. Uh, and the the city of Southfield Police GPW cost. This is just an estimate uh, of 15 production cost, 32 projected talent cost. They cost the most fifty thousand dollars. All right, so uh, that's just a small breakdown of of the budget. Prospective sponsors. Now these uh, where you see comedy <coughs> reviews. These are people that already have sponsorship packets and are just waiting to hear back. Uh, Olympia Entertainment is in possession of our, uh, we're going after capital mortgage funding, Quicken Loans, and these are all of the sponsors that we're looking at going after. So it's a, it's, this is just a small list of them, I should say, because the list is a lot larger. Uh, but those that are currently reviewing are just awaiting further information. And that is that. And I'll just open it up for questions that you might have. Uh, the sponsors that you mm -hmm. have on there, um, do you have anyone that's willing to do a, be like the key headline sponsor? Actually, that would be Olympic Entertainment. There, there, there are three on that list that we, that really could underwrite it by themselves. Right. Uh, Olympia Entertainment, the two you don't see are Quicken Loans. And the one you do see is Harry Glenn's at, at Capital Mortgage Fund. <coughs> uh, so those are those are two that yeah they, they're they're on the list and they could they could do this by themselves. But uh, General Motors is being contacted, PepsiCo is being contacted, and that was one of the questions I had for mm -hmm. Mr. Block. I don't know if it was Mr. Block or one of them. I, I asked the question about mm -hmm. exclusivity agreement right. because you got to be careful coming into a city. You don't know who's got what agreement. Mm -hmm. Maybe you use Coke products. Use Pepsi, so you don't want to upset the apple cart in that way. Uh, but other than that, <coughs> everybody's on the hit list, including the sponsors that did this before in right. 2008. For sure, they're on the, they're on the list. For sure. And I know this is your your event, um, but one of the sponsors' opportunities was that separate area that was that they could entertain their guests separately. VIP, yeah, absolutely. The VIP. That is that's actually one of the sponsorship letters that is going out mm -hmm. uh, for those type of opportunities to have a separate VIP area right. to entertain their people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. And that was a huge selling point because, you know, some for the VIP to just be at the festival and then they even tried one year to have a separate area that you paid more for that you didn't have to worry about the umbrellas and all that. The yeah. other thing mm -hmm. is the beer and wine, mm -hmm. um, there, toward the end, we started allowing charities okay. to have the beer tent okay. for a certain period of time, and that was, to me, that was a really good partnership mm -hmm. because we had the Optimus Club, we had other things, and, and the organization would man the mm -hmm. tent, and they would get the proceeds during that time. And I just wanted to throw that out there as an opportunity. Sometimes that was considered taking profit away from uh, the organization, but I, I just thought that was really a, a really strong community piece with that. We discussed, actually, had discussed it with, uh, with the team about beer and wine. We discussed it, we really discussed it about, because it's going to be August hot yeah. uh, 
that was one of the things we talked about doing with the water. Mm -hmm. uh, but the beer and wine is not out I of mean, the question. It's so whatever, that, just a lot yeah, because, of because charity. Exactly, because you because one of the reasons I can't speak to that per se is when you invite like the beer companies, like we're going after Millicores, I have no idea at that point how that begins to intersect. I can't mm -hmm. see where it would be a huge problem. But but yeah, it, 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 it's a good thing. If you've done it in the past, it's worked. Everything that helps that charity makes some money because that's what we talked about that with the water. It's like, you know, the proceeds from water sales are going to oh, be huge, enormous. Huge, huge. Yeah, enormous. Yeah. Now, this is the other thing. When you, um, the advertising, mm -hmm. and I, I used to interact a lot with Smooth Jazz. Okay. And one of the, their greatest assets is that they have the targeted market mm -hmm. and they got to enter, they got to advertise to the people that wanted to come. Yes. Months in advance. Yes. Now, your uh, digital, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have the ability to see how centrally located, because jazz people, and it's being digital, it could be anywhere in the country. Yeah. But is there any other, your marketing cost mm -hmm. is going to be greater than smooth jazz, because, you know, you, you said you, know, you have a viewing it's 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 that's what, what the best part mm -hmm. about what we do is, for example, terrestrial radio has to they have to depend on arbitrage and they have to depend on on Nielsen. and and so those variables can be really kind of topsy turvy. The, they use something called the Hume's number, which actually kind of multiplies what actually exists. Mm -hmm. Well, the cool part about digital is ours lost actual IP addresses, and we can actually see the actual location of the target audience, mm -hmm. which kind of gives us a little bit of a, a little bit of a up. Now, we already know, you're right, we already know we have to put out additional advertising on okay. television, right. uh, use people like Target Spot, Google, yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff okay. to pull the top. You're but I just want to make sure you're in Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right, next uh, is Ms. Seymour. Thank you. Um, the mayor did address some of the issues I want to talk about, but I want to talk about sponsors again. Mm -hmm. um, I think we had, General Motors was a major sponsor, and I thought they pulled out. I thought that was a good reason for the reason that General Motors pulled out was going to play. But um, what I want to ask you about this list is the people that are currently reviewing are the only people that have been contacted, these others have not been contacted? We, 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 put, out, we put out most of that stuff to certain players okay. in the beginning. For example, Olympia Entertainment was an opportunity that we had someone on the inside who was willing to begin the review process. Mm -hmm. And and so at some point we decided that we wanted to make sure that this date was a complete I mean, ready to go mm -hmm. before just flooding everybody out there. Right. So and that was people have not been contacted. Not all of them. But their perspective. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, the ones current currently reviewing have the paperwork in their hands. Okay. So these others are going to move forward. Whatever you feel is the right time to approach them. We'll move forward tomorrow. Oh, okay. yes, okay. <laughs> there, literally, bo bottom line is bottom line is we didn't want to be too presumptuous, and we wanted to make sure that we had the blessing of this body. Okay. And then once we have the blessing of this body, uh, then there's a lot that gets triggered, and within 24 hours, believe it. I think they, I think he will. And that, that there are a couple of, of them uh, that I actually ended up with quite by accident uh, a connection to. Harry Glanz, I actually met him personally at Hellenic Coney Island uh, after having lunch <laughs> with, a, with with another gentleman who I know, who Harry actually knew, and he actually described this event. And and Harry said, send me a, you know, when you and know, send me a proposal. Guys, you know, you yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Okay, um, a lot of entertainment would be great. I mean, oh, they would be out. Such a reputation. <coughs> yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Or to do something. Um, what you mentioned and, about and one, and since one is my bank, they, yeah, they <laughs> should do something, absolutely. <laughs> my bank, too, so I yeah, can help you. That's right. Um, charities, I think, I, in the past, we did have the water mm -hmm. sales go to local charities. Okay. I don't know about the beer. I, I don't remember. We did, that. Did we the beer? The water did. Okay. So you said the optimist did you? Yes. Okay. That's all important. That's all. Thank you.
Just a question. Uh, yes, what about a, a rain date, or is that a have you figured that into your plans? A rain date? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good. You know, that's a that's a good that's a good alternative plan. You're absolutely right. One of the reasons we did not think about a rain date per se, we actually did the weather studies on this, and during that time of the year, it's if you get something, it's a very quick passing. Mm -hmm. Shower. Yeah, I thought we had a but if you that one that but one event. Had a mud yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but now it's be kinda interesting, a good alternative. As a matter of fact, I think I asked who was it? One of you about the inside. Um I can't remember which one. But I did ask, I was very curious when I got into the parks and rec buildings, this is a really big area. And so that would be an awesome alternative. Because you could actually stage, you could do something alternatively inside. Mm -hmm. What is that considered? The uh, pavilion? Yeah. Yes. 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 That's a generous area. So that would be a great place for an alternative. Okay. Was that mud fest? You had a mud whatever. Wasn't that a jazz fest? And it was never canceled. Okay. Um, next we have Mr. Lance. Yeah. Yes. I'm, uh, you're telling about the revenue sharing. Is that revenue sharing? Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean as far as far as the uh, the I've got you. Uh, in the past, <coughs> as, it's been, as, it, as it's been explained to me, uh, you guys sold tickets from the Parks and Rec building, mm -hmm. and and you charge a surcharge for that that service. Uh, and I was told it generates pro approximately maybe between three and four thousand dollars. And so that that's something that we would do. That's not a that's not even an issue. Uh, so that would be one way that that could be done. Well, that right. that mm -hmm. Mr. Lance, is that it? Is that enough? We get the rental from the lawn. Uh, yeah, the rental from the lawn, exactly. We tried like it before, there we didn't charge a rental. There is a rental mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. I can just check to that. For a moment, Mr. Lance. I mean, the bottom line total that returns to the city is about $25,000. Um, there's cost recovery from poli the police department, park services, uh, DPW, and the fire administration. There's about a four or five thousand dollar revenue stream from the six sales that Ken just mentioned, um, and there's the $4,500 fee that's been traditional for the rental of the front lawn.
uh, WWJ? No. no cities. Where? The cities. Wherever those cities, cities, wherever those cities reach. In other words, wherever those those uh, stations reach their reach, that's who will advertise. Uh, WJR has a large reach. WWJ has a large reach, and so does Sports Radio. So wherever they go in the metro area, that's what that's what that advertising reach is going to be. Also, television. Uh, so you've got Fox 2, you've got WDIV, you've got Channel 7. A as a matter of fact, we're actually approaching one of those stations about being an official sponsor and being on scene to cover the event. So whoever that is, they'll they'll actually get exclusive broadcast rights, and that's probably who's going to carry the most advertising for for the event. Okay. I'd like you to listen to me for a moment. Sure. All right. Are you done? Wait, I'll I'll need another one. We have had problems with people coming into our city, going to our restaurants, going to public places, using guns, shooting, and all that. And you think you can keep out those 18, 20, 25, 29, 30 people? We can keep them out of the event, unless they bought a ticket. Now, if they bought a ticket, and that's the other thing, the ticket price doesn't lend itself to that crowd yeah. because you're talking about $35 for a single day, $60 for both days. So it's even priced at a price point where you're going to get a different crowd altogether. If it was priced at, for example, five, ten bucks, uh, you might get that. But then the process, the other problem that I, I see with that theory is, again, the genre of music is different from what they listen to. That age group is more into a hip-hop. If we were bringing a hip-hop uh, <laughs> concert to your city, it would be totally different. It wouldn't happen. It, it would be. <laughs> well, that's my point. But I'm saying it wouldn't happen. But but you see my point. Your 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 genres of music draw different audiences, and that's right. that's what I'm, I'm not. Talking about. I'm not against this. No, no, no. I'm just I'm trying I'm to answer. I'm only giving you some information and uh, experience that we had. Mm. There was a restaurant recently that was closed up. They had a line of teens. Mm. When I say teens, 18 to, to 40. Mm -hmm. They were charged, and they paid $30. Then when they went in, they paid more. <coughs> they could afford it. This was a restaurant? Uh, uh, nightclub. But you should have heard the music. The music was completely, it was rap. It was, it was, was it, right. it, yeah, it was awful rap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't even good uh, rap. So uh, right. Right. Okay. All right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm we, we have to move on. Uh, because we have three other things, and I've got several people that want to speak. So All right, I have uh, my say. Okay. Thank you. It's on the um, record. Uh, Mr. Moss is next, and Moss. then Ms. Seymour. Yeah, I'm about to contradict this whole conversation. I came to this event all throughout college, so I. Uh, but it, it does attract a different type <coughs> of, you know, people who have, might have appreciation for this music. It's sophisticated, as, as my And he came said. with his parents. I came with my parents. <laughs> yeah, it was a family. It was right. a family outing. So that's you true. You can't compare yourself with. It, with well, my, that's not even my question. So my, my the point that that's I want to make is, um, on slide four. I don't know if you can go back, but you talk about all the amenities that this city has and, and you know what a what a great uh, experience you've had cooperating with Southfield government at every level and I know that that's that's something that the, the people at this table definitely like to hear but we need uh, you also uh, to kind of be an ambassador for us when you go forward and you're dealing with Pegasus and you're dealing mm -hmm. with other entertainment venues mm -hmm. we need you know we need the word of mouth from you to, to talk about th that was a slide do you want to go right, forward hold on. Oh. Okay. yeah you know, all those things, you know, we're, we're self-promoters. We want to, you know, do everything for the best benefit of the city, and we want to attract businesses. But when somebody has a good, positive experience in working with mm -hmm. the city and spreads that around, it's um, it lends more credibility than when we talk about ourselves. So I guess m I just want to keep let that. Let me give you an example of yeah. how, how much, how, sm how smooth this has been. I put it on my Facebook page. Great. 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 So, that, so yes. I, I want yes. it. Was it pleasurable? Yeah. You I want a definite... It, it to be on your mind throughout the entire summer as you're planning up to this to help us as we need to do economic development in this city. And if you're somebody who's had a positive experience in bringing a large venue, the accessibility of coming in and out of the city process, we need you to be an ambassador for us as you go to as, as you've been working with partners, including Pegasus, which is a major event uh, organization throughout the whole region. We need you to be an ambassador on our behalf. So I just want to make sure that that's on your mind is when this is all said and done. Um, because this is, is a huge opportunity for Southfield, and we want to keep this momentum going 
and, and you know be a sense be a be a community <coughs> that you know there are things to go to and have. But we can only do that if the people that we partner with right. spread that around. So I just wanted to make a quick comment that I'm excited for it. Um, and I'll definitely be there, but we need you to keep promoting our city um, throughout the whole process. Now let me say one thing on on that is we don't want to just come in and do this one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want this to be a, an annual event. The first meeting we ever had on the 28th went very smoothly, and we went right on talking about what we could do in 2014. The same thing happened yeah. at the Parks and Rec Board meeting, mm -hmm. and that's actually been a lot of the discussion is, okay, fine, we want to get through the one, but how do we make 2014 better yeah. than and build on it. And certainly, you know, yep. we want, we would, if it goes well, which I anticipate it will, it will, we want to continue to have this be an annual thing. But my thought is that I think when you, when major events want to do, major venues want to do kind of an outdoor setting, I think the default to place to go is downtown Royal Oak. And so when we have, you don't think so? No. no. Well, that, that, but no. I'm saying that's a good thing that, you know, yeah. you, you can be somebody who says, you know, Southfield is actually the optimal place to do something like this. Yeah, and the biggest the biggest <laughs> night I have on, on Royal Oak, and not to beat the city up, right. I, and, and like I said, I can only go personally, but the things I've went to in Royal Oak, I'm just being honest with you, have frustrated me to no end. Yeah. And I've talked to other people yes. parking. Yeah. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, somebody asked me, "Would you pay for? Would you actually charge for parking at this event?" And my my my, was, my response was, "Are you kidding? The first thing people think about when they come someplace is whether they had a pleasurable experience parking. It, it boils down to stuff like that. And so I think you, you you have to really. I look at Royal Oak and I say it's a nice place to visit if you can park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I'm excited, and, and I'm I'm, uh, I'm definitely I'll be there. So. All right, let's see more, and then we need to move along. Okay. Uh, first of all, we have a long history of having this jazz fest, and so many people ask about it. And because the sponsor left, and it had nothing to do with the city of Celtic, you know, within that organization. So people people will come to this. Mm -hmm. I think what, what we have to think about, and you said you check all bags, you've got my backpacks and anything that people might bring in. Yes. Not just handbags. Yeah. If maybe not even handbags. But, but I think now, since the Boston Marathon, we always have to think of a large event where a lot of people mm -hmm. just need one person to come in mm -hmm. with one of these, you know, pressurized, pressure cooker mm -hmm. bombs, mm -hmm. ju and just because they can. Mm -hmm. So to have that kind of security where anything that's being carried in is looked at, that w that, if that had been done there, they'd have caught it. But nobody thought of it. So that's, that, I think, is what it will be have to be concerned for now from now on everywhere when we have an event. Uh, but I'm sure if the viewer has the interest in, in continuing, I'm sure it will continue. Because we, you know, we have this reputation. Uh, we will use you in every way that we can to help promote the city. Because it will promote this event too. Yes, absolutely. So I'm, I'm very excited about it and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I have a quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, in the past, we've had events on the uh, uh, lawn that have run over sixteen thousand dollars. Excuse me. Excuse me. We've had events in the past that have run over sixteen thousand uh, dollars. Is there a guarantee that if, if more uh, police or, or park services uh, uh, requirements uh, that uh, you're going to cover everything? Yes, and that's how you that's to be that. worked out through In other words, our agreement. The city can't be, this is a great event, yep. we want it, but we, we can't be on the tab for it. I think, you know, when we came into this process, uh, one of the parts of, one of the research items I first did was the fact that municipalities can't support these things and that you have to be in the mindset that you have to support it wholly. And so that's where you do the ticket sales and obviously the sponsors, but to be frank and honest, Really, the ticket sales will cover the event easily, uh, and that's the, that's not going to be an issue paying for it. Okay. No, not we it. also a yes. bond is calculated, okay. the upfront mm -hmm. bond, based yes. on what we anticipate there will be between parks and rec, public works and police. So. Yep. Okay. Can I just add one really quick thing? Sure. Since the initial meeting, candidate team, we understand the concept of full cost recovery, and to Mr. Lance's point, the whole security issues, we. Uh, given the Cliff Notes version of some of the scenarios that went down in the past year and understand Council's concerns. 
moving forward to their credit, we were much ahead of the curve in even having this initial meeting, not to be too, too presumptuous that this was going to pass, and we will have subsequent meetings addressing your concerns and everybody else's. Um, we're going to move this to the uh, 7 o'clock agenda. Is there uh, I'm, um, anybody that is uh, opposed to being uh, having that on the agenda? If not, um, we are moving that to the 7 o'clock and we'll move on to our next topic. I've got to push a little bit. We have three other things. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next thing on our agenda is the authorization to apply for an MDOT uh, economic development uh, category A grant for the uh, rehabilitation of the Mile Road Bridge. Yes, uh, I'll introduce this and turn it over to uh, our uh, engineer, uh, Lee Schultz. Um, this is a just uh, an economic development uh, initiative, a partnership with uh, BASF uh, to to uh, co-apply co for a uh, grant of uh, about 185000 dollars with the match coming out of our major streets and budget for the purpose of improving the uh, bridge uh, that is uh, the, the production interest for BASF. Uh, this will allow them to invest uh, other uh, monies uh, in their capital uh, of, uh, in, in their site to the tune of $369,000 and also bring 11 new uh, uh, highly compensated uh, uh, positions uh, to the city of Southfield. With that, Lee Schultz, please. Good evening, Ms. Schultz. Good evening, Mr. President. Uh, so what we have is Category A grant through the MDOT Economic Development Fund. Uh, this grant will allow us, this bridge has been on our hit list for quite a while, um, it doesn't qualify in MDOT's language as a bridge, so it's not eligible for local bridge funding um, the way it's built now. So this was an opportunity for us to make some real improvements to this bridge and give it a big, long, extended life um, and having some participation with state funds. So if, is everyone familiar with the location of this mm -hmm. bridge? Yeah. Okay, because it's on you know a piece of road that you probably don't travel too often. I put a map up here. Here's our mixing bowl area and where Telegraph is. This is where Franklin comes up and turns into 11 Mile Road there. So, but if you jog a little off to the right, there's a little stretch of road. It's a dead end and goes to two BASF owned properties. And then there's a property over here that's leased by AT&T. And that's a pretty critical uh, property for them where all of their service <coughs> trucks originate from. Lee, in the last year we've had to restrict the weight. Uh, we've had to restrict the, the weight for the, the last several years. So this bridge is on an annual inspection rotation because <coughs> of its condition. So each year we have to lower the load limits, and which has caused, in 2011, it's caused BASF to have to reroute some of their heavier trucks. And Mr. President, these are monies that the FDOT has that are economic development related. The mayor and Shelley Freeman in 2010 and Mackinac spoke to Mike Finney, the uh, president of the Machine Economic Development Corporation, and our lobbyist has worked with us as well as BSS lobbyists. The last, we've been working on this almost three years now. Yep. Uh, I would remind everyone that this is what, what's before us is only the application to apply for the grant. It is not building a bridge uh, or anything else. It is just the uh, permission to apply for grants. Right, this is permission to apply. And what <coughs> the bridge repairs that we're asking to make here is to replace some of the bridge's steel beams, the steel support beams, as well as the concrete decking, the railings, and then the approaches, the drive approaches to the bridge. Okay. Procedurally, uh, the grant would come back if successful, and then we would uh, uh, use the normal uh, bid processes uh, for the uh, for the construction, and that would come back to the council as well. Correct. All right. First, I have Mr. Lance, uh, <coughs> and I have Mr. Percotti, and Mr. Frey. Right. Does this bridge go into that uh, the complex, that office complex? Where, where is it? On eight miles? No, it's no. eleven miles. Away. It's in your packet. Is it green? It's Telegraph. It's right behind the Holiday Inn. Oh, I know. Okay. Okay. 
construction costs uh, involved in the project. Uh, all of these costs have to be covered up front by the city uh, because this would this is a reimbursable a reimbursable grant, which is what we mean here. That means the the city puts forth the dollars and then we recoup the dollars from the grant as the project is completed. And the SAD uh, over a period of 10 years at 3% uh, interest uh, would be the reimbursement uh, stream. Two things have to happen to make this project work. That is that the grant uh, application, well, three things actually. First, we have to submit a grant. And then if the grant application is successful, there also has to be a, an SAD, uh, a special assessment district, uh, accepted by and supported by uh, the residents to make uh, these numbers work. Uh, if I could add here, Mr. Lance and I attended the community meeting. Um, there was overwhelming support uh, for, I, Mr. Lance would you say, 40, 50 residents were there, and Ms. Schultz was there, and uh, Mr. Trevor, 40, 50 people were there. Uh, there's overwhelming support for this. At this what? Yeah, at the neighborhood meeting. So was, I mean, what are you asking? I am uh, telling. Oh, okay. uh, there was support from the people that happened to show up to a neighborhood meeting uh, for mm -hmm. this. There was one person in the audience who objected, correct? Yeah. I beat the crap out of him. <laughs> <laughs> you gave him a run for his money. I gave him a run for his money. <laughs> I have no doubt. I believe it. He was so vulgar or so. That also, this would be on the consent agenda uh, for authorization to apply for a grant. Is there any other question? Um, this, uh, is Mr. Fakasi, is your hand up? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. You're first, then Ms. Seymour? Uh, and let me, let me uh, uh, make this observation, I guess I would call it. Um, You know, the all came about uh, because of the grant. And to me, this grant has caused uh, the city to follow uh, unwritten rules. And, and, and I have no objection to going after the grant. But, but all sidewalks in the city have a process and a policy to follow. And we have not followed any of the policies. We've had no resolution one, two, three, four, and five. What we have done is we have hired a architect to do all the drawings, and and I don't know what that's based on because that's usually you know after we have declared this a necessity, which we have not done. In other words, this should have uh, just to go over. But the, you know, the first resolution one is to refer it to the administration who will prepare a report to inform council of the, of the necessity of the project. And resolution number two, which council passes, it determines if the project is necessary. And then the, and resolution number three is the public hearing uh, to the public to see if they are in favor of it. And then resolution number four is the assessor prepares the role after uh, they have got that estimation of the people and then the role comes before the public and and then of course the treasury then levies the role. And that is that is the way government itself works. Now what we have done is we've got a grant and engineers are working and, and I don't know where the money is coming from, who would put the money to spend on this project. Uh, I don't know how much. I'm sure that it's more than one or two thousand dollars. They're even paying, I guess, to go to these public meetings to talk about the project. So it, it, it's coming from a grant, not coming from the council to the administrator. I, I and, and so, I don't know how it's going to, how to react to this, other, you know, because now we have spoke to the residents, we've had discussions with them, we've led them down the path that we're going to do this, 
And we don't even know whether or not we have the grant or how much the grant is, because now I understand the original grant is being asked to, to put more money into this project to relieve the residents. But nowhere in there does it does the rules tell the city to do a such a thing. And and so uh, I mean I would like to see this thing get back on that track so that we follow procedures that we have since day one and those council act on those resolutions one through five and do it properly so that everything is legal and, and, and we can support uh, the project and the levying of the of the assessment and that the treasury then receive the proper permission to spread the roll. In this way the treasurer brings this to council and to the back door and 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 I'm not saying that you should bring it to the to the city, but it should have gone to the council and council then referred to the city administrator to follow the necessary steps and procedures of the city so that if anybody challenges the role or the amount of money we're spending. Lastly, uh, I have a real concern in that where the money is coming from for this project. I don't know who to send it, but I, I, the revolving yeah. fund, yeah. the revolving fund had, it was cut in half. It was $8 million and we now have $4 million left after I wrote about something. Um, we got it. Uh, uh, okay. You have it. I don't have yeah, it. Yeah. 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 You know, it's on my internet, but I haven't got it in my time. Anyway, yeah, is that in I haven't got that piece. I just got it on the internet. But, but look what's happening. And, and you know, uh, I mean, I'm very concerned about the dollars. I'm sure you, council and mayor, are too. I know the administrator seats very little will be there. But, you know, we have to have, to have a priority. And, and I tell you, I was out getting signatures and people are talking about roads. I mean, our roads are crumbling. They're falling apart. Uh, we had the worst winter that I think we've ever had as far as roads. I drove on Greenfield because I knew that that we were involved in that. And I, I can't even believe the road could, should even exist like that in the city. But but when you leave that street and go down road, then it's the same way. And then if you go on the service drive, you turn right on and go north on, on the service drive, it's worse than Rutland. Our neighborhood street. So, Our so, neighborhood street. So, well, yeah, and that's what I heard. I had a person put an X, and, and when she signed my petition, she put an X, and that's if you vote for local street improvement. Because that's how much they care about it, and, and they see it. Mm -hmm. And 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 so, I, I just, you know, we, we have another half a million dollars that are spent on sidewalks, and and um, and half a million on Inglewood Park, and then two million, approximately, whatever it is, uh, on Ramon, and and yeah, we need our roads. We need to have this money. I think we're, we're way short. Of, I asked earlier about what, how much money is in a major road, and, and 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 I know it's not enough to cover anything. Can I ask you two questions? Yes. Uh, one, are you recommending that we not proceed with this? No, I am um, saying is I just that. I'm trying to get clear where you're at. Okay, what I'm saying is, number one, is go back to the resolutions that the policy sets forth. Number two is, if the grant is available to go after the grant and see what, how much money we can get to apply to this project. So, but I think we have to find out how much money we're talking about if we are going to get this grant so that we know how to apply it to to the project itself. Uh, you look at this this plan, for example. I, I mean, I, you know, I drove this thing and walked it. But down at the, if you look at the map here, there's a little turnaround there with four houses on it. You know, the, the sidewalk in the first phase, I think my was seen, is just going along the southern end of that and stopping. Now it's going all the way around. And I don't know what to do, going around the circle. I mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. 
you know, I mean, sidewalks cost money. And you, if you want to save money, it should, I mean, after you pass that, that uh, the homes on whatever street. Fair that, 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 you know, you have, you have the widest sidewalk you have in, in the city. And that's the street because nobody uses it to turn around. And, and I mean, they could actually, they actually could end at the end of where the four houses are. I, I guess I'm looking at, uh, to answer your question, uh, I am very, very, very concerned about spending the money from, <coughs> from the, um, the city, the revolving fund, on, on sidewalks because I don't know where the new money is going to come from. Because it, it, it's, it's not only cash, it's, if you read that $8 million, that's it, our investments we're spending. You know? And, and, and our investments aren't, aren't uh, too great, probably less than a percent, maybe percent and a half, whatever, but, but at, at least you get something. But you're going to spend your investment money and 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 then over 10 years, you're going to charge 3% over 10 years. So you're going to give up that that money that you've been investing in because it dies by the mind in 10 years. And, we, and then, you know, what, what are we going to do in, in 10 years that we're facing and, and looking at the, the, the roads that we have? I So, uh, Mr. President, I, I, I mean, I, I am very concerned about the money. And, and and I just don't know what priority, uh, and don't get me wrong, I mean, I understand the Orthodox Jewish community, I mean, I have, when I was there, I had, we had to, you know, them come before me, we had to hear them put up all around the city, we, we did, I was with Governor Blanchard, went to New York over the bridges, over the expressways, I, I understand all this, but, but how important are the sidewalks, if they're important enough, then, then we should pay only a third less uh, on this project because when I look back at the sidewalks, special assessments that we had in the past, we some back in 2002, I looked at uh, the $7,000 project, you're only paying like $2,000. May, may I suggest this? Uh, to I think we all share the concern with the money and uh, we're all hearing the road uh, issue. Um, and I think this has gotten a little off track. So I don't argue with anything you're saying. But where we are tonight, this is a grant application. I think we really need to know how much money we are going to get. And then we would assess whether we would go forward with this. Yeah, because if this is a loser for us, it does come that's down to priorities. And that's one of the reasons I've been pushing visioning because we have to decide what our priorities are with what resources we have. And maybe, uh, as, as, and this is a safety thing for the community, uh, and it's a great project, but we're in a different day and age. So yeah, but what I'm afraid of, Mr. President, is that we have excited the people mm -hmm. and that they are now looking forward to a sidewalk. And I think you've got a point there as well. But and, and I would add one other thing. On is just not my game. I would add one other thing. We, w we had a community meeting. We have no scientific data as to how many people, once, the, and some people are under the impression it's only going to cost them $100. And that's not, that's not the case. So we really don't know how many people, how many people are really going to sign on the dotted line when they see, this, see what the figures are. So, um, I think we have already spent, I, w I venture to say, we have already spent $40,000 on this project, we haven't done anything yet. I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know. Anybody can shake their head, but I'd like to see the, the checks that were made out. The, the direct cost, the direct cost, probably about fifteen thousand. Not indirect cost. We haven't done anything. It's a whole other ball game. Yeah. Anyway. All right. I just might. Um. Is there any any other comment on this? Otherwise, we'll we'll join in the group. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Demo. Can I have my hand up? No, I, I didn't see it. So, uh, <laughs> but well, I do have a question because there's some areas in here that I don't think actually need a sidewalk because they've 
back up to the shopping center, and um, people are walking, and there's, there's, there's not two-way traffic. It's just, there isn't two-way traffic. But, I, I mean, I have the same concerns Don has. I think we'd all like to see sidewalks completed everywhere. That's something we've, we've always <coughs> talked about all down through the years. We didn't like having a sidewalk to nowhere. Um, but our economic demands for the city really have to be, you know, are above everything else. And I don't know. That's, that's really what concerns me. There's a lot of things we need to do. The roads need to be done most urgently. And um, I, mean, we, there, I, do, I have concerns, e economic concerns and priority concerns. And I just think we have to be very cautious about what, how we go forward. Mr. Frazier and then Ms. Mark. Yes, um, <coughs> there's no more sidewalk here than there was in the original plan. Yeah. 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 It looks like it to me. <coughs> yeah. Both sides of the street. I, I don't want to labor anything too much, but the initial grant application is what is the minimum that we needed to do to make the connection? But based on the response of the neighborhood, they said if we're willing to do a special assessment district and we're <coughs> to do everything, that's the plan that we have before you. It was always our intention that if we need to scale the, this project back depending on the grant amounts, <coughs> we would. Of the 400, close to 500,000, we're only talking about a $95,000 city match. And because of the support that we got at the neighborhood meeting, we said, what, what would it take to do all the sidewalks in the entire neighborhood? So that's why it's back before you. It's, it's a much more comprehensive grant application. And our intent is we have to go through this process of the special assessment district. We have to go back to the neighborhood depending on how much funding we got. And we can make decisions on what's the prior and what isn't. And we wanted to at least apply for everything. So it is it is expanded from the first time that we submitted it to you. Yeah, um, I share a lot of the concerns that uh, Mr. Capacity shares, and that is this seems to have sprung up like, like a mushroom. We hadn't heard anything about it, and then I found out, and now it's two mushrooms because it's the second mushroom is. Uh, sprung up, make it more uh, sidewalk than, than even in the beginning. Um, but I but I share the concerns that we, we don't have money to throw around like that. Uh, this is not 10, 15 years ago when, you know, we had to stay out of the way so we didn't get killed by the money falling in. Uh, <laughs> but here are some concerns that I have. And I know that it's easy in the heat of the moment, oh, we're going to get sidewalks. Everybody raise your, who wants sidewalks? Everybody raise their hand. Um, in the meeting, was it made very clear <laughs> that there are some landscaping that appears to be in a right of way and that's going to get torn out at the and it's going to have to be replaced at the owner's expense? Uh, because I know we went through the rose bush thing. And uh, I don't know if we're done with the Rose Bush thing. So <laughs> I think so. Yeah. That's but, uh, in there in a while. <laughs> I mean, and that's one Rose Bush, but, but there was one stretch there that looked like a whole hedgerow mm -hmm. that looked like it was in the right of way that's going to get torn out. And I don't know if that was covered with the people that they're going to have to replace that plus pay for the sidewalk. Um, the other thing is, can someone opt out if? You know, if they find out that, it's, that it costs more than they want to pay, can they opt out? Not in the SAD. Well, again, if you correct me if I'm wrong, this word, 60 per 60 well, yeah. percent no, of the people. Absolutely. They can file a counter petition and maybe kill the whole SAD, but once the SAD is approved, you can't opt out and say, well, I just should not have the sidewalk and, and in front and of And just me. again, uh, Mr. Tressel, I think the average cost is about $291 a year. And it could go uh, up or down depending on the linear footage. But we did ask you to incorporate engineering, landscaping, and all the other costs to come up with that, that that's ballpark. Sure, yeah. That's all included. Yes. For okay. how many years? Ten, ten, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. The, um, the other question that I have is, <laughs> let's say someone says, uh, 
I got a brother-in-law that's in the cement business. Can I have him put my sidewalk in? I'm sorry. If someone says uh, I got a brother-in-law that is in the cement business, can he put my sidewalk in rather than the contractor that we're that's going to get hired? Not once the SAD is done. Like right now, if somebody wanted to put a piece of sidewalk in front of their house, they could. But once the SAD is done, it's a public project at that point. It's a public project. Even if they design it, if, even if they say he can build it less expensive than it's going to cost the city, but, but he'll do it to the same standards? Yeah, yeah that's the thing. It's, it's, once it's a public project, because an FAD process has been completed, then it, it is a public process. Right now, anybody could go and, and the city could demand you to teach me We want sidewalks in those areas, and if you don't put them in, we'll do it. So the ordinance already exists for that. So if, if, you, if they wanted their brother-in-law to do it, they should do it before a city <laughs> project. Gets but even initiated. in those special assessments, too, we give them a date specific for the start. I mean, they in well, that that was on the repairs, on right? Repair. We always we told them they had to know that date, right? And we would say they could do it on you do it themselves it by this date, or then the city project comes through and we'll do it <coughs> for you. So whether we would include that now on a on a on a new construction, I just think you're going to have a lot of issues because if someone says, "Well, my brother-in-law is going to do it, but he can't get to it till next week," and our contractor's coming through, this, you know, I mean, it's just, it just it could be very problematic. Okay, and. If someone sells their house before the 10 years is up, this... Most most lenders require, when you sell your house, they require special assessments to be paid off. They have to satisfy us. Generally. Now, you can negotiate. Buyer and seller can negotiate <coughs> and say, well, okay, I'll agree to pay this. And, but you deal with it at closing because the lender doesn't want that to be a lien against the property when they come in with their mortgage. So typically it's resolved at closing. Okay. Um, last point that I'm going to make is... I tend to agree with Don on this, uh, especially since this is this has grown, and we really don't have a plan. I mean, it's it's it just seemed to visit us without any kind of a structure structure to it. It's like somebody had a great idea, and that's you know like the Judy Garland movies. You know, you get the you get the sheets, and I'll get the chairs, and we'll put on a play. You know. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a little nervous about it myself. So. Uh, Miss Lawrence and Mr. Lance. Oh, okay. Mr. Lance. Uh, yes. How about the people who already have sidewalks? Are they are they included in? No, if they have sidewalks, they wouldn't be in the SAD. Okay. All right. All right. The the purpose, I believe, of this project is safety and security of the the children and the people who walk to the synagogues during the weekends and they walk the road. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. And they're willing to, to have an assessment. So why, why deny the safety issue of the, <coughs> of the couple hundred families? Mr. Moss and Ms. Seymour than Mr. Perkowski. Yeah, you know, I see, I, there are definitely merits to what Mr. Perkowski says, without a doubt. Um, I weigh that on the opposite side of the spectrum with, you know, this is some of the most stable, this is one of the most stable neighborhoods in the city, the, the fastest growing area in the city, and, um, you know, it almost goes back to, and, and, these, and, and this community is obviously the walking community in certain parts of the week, and it goes back to the, to the synagogue that we put in that strip mall. The reason we kind of took extraordinary circumstances in approving that and allowing that to happen was because this community is not going to be moving anywhere. It's pretty much set here. So if, the, if it's a concern of this community that, you know, they need a safe and vibrant area, and they're already there, and they're willing to go forward with the process to say, you know what, I will take this assessment, um, I would be willing to support it. However, my concern also goes back to what Mr. Fertazzi said, is that I want to make sure that the process is followed to a T with those five resolutions um, and, and get an expectation of what's the timeline of this project. But, you know, we've proved, or we've proved tonight to apply for the grant. I want more, of, you know, this really did spring up 
And I, I just kind of want more clarity of what are the next steps. And it's not just for our benefit. I think the community and the residents need to know exactly what to expect. That, you know, we don't approve the grant tonight and there's sidewalk construction beginning by the end of the week. And I, I think there is kind of that miscommunication that that, that is happening. So I, see, do, I do see merits to this project moving forward, but not until I'm at a comfortable part where every single thing that the city requires of us to do to make this go forward is being satisfied including all, you know that list of that Don brought forward thank you uh, one of the one of the concerns besides the trees and the, the uh, planting that people will have to tear up to do to have this done but is there something about the drainage and the, the uh, underground stuff that there's a lot of tearing up to get uh, you know, I'm not using the right terminology but the the um, maybe sprinkling systems. Sprinkling, well, sprinkling uh, systems, but also yeah, the un well, our system, sewer our drains. system of sewer drains. Sewer yeah. drains, right? That that I mean, that we evaluated the cost of that. But one thing, one thing puzzles me here. When you move into a neighborhood and you know there's no sidewalk, you, you've taken that upon yourself to have a place that doesn't have sidewalk in front of your house, even though you know, people on either side or across the street might have it. So all of a sudden, it's become a problem. But I mean, if you move in and there's no sidewalk, can you just expect the city to put it in? I, I'm, I'm puzzled by that because so many people have lived there a long time, and all of a sudden now it's a problem. It, it just it's puzzling to me. I can respond to that in, in what I know from having taught at Thompson School. The, the issue of sidewalks, particularly in the winter with the kids walking to school after a heavy snow has, uh, has been there Forever. since the 60s. Forever. Yeah. So it, it, it's not really <laughs> a new thing, but no one acted on it until now, apparently. And the other thing I would add is, remember when we did the special assessment in Cranbrook, and there was an issue with sidewalks only on one side of the street. And the people that didn't have the sidewalks on their side of the street were kind of mumped. And the people that had the sidewalks and had to have the special assessment weren't too happy about the people across mm -hmm. the street. I'm paying for their sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So this seemed to be more equitable uh, in having sidewalks on both sides of the street uh, because that's part of the double mushroom here um, when, when this, this came about. But Mr. Perkowski is next. Yes. Uh, well, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Mr. Lance that, that Safety is, it has to be a, a, a major responsibility of the city. Uh, but at the same time, you know, roads are safety hazards the way they are as well. And and uh, and I was just when you're talking about walking in the street, I, I, I when we had the synagogue down the street from my house on Monterey, at the end, uh, nobody cleaned their sidewalk, so they walked through the street because the city plowed it. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was in reverse. So, you know, I mean, we're going to shovel the sidewalks at uh, 7. It snows. Yeah, right. That's um, something we could Ms. do. Mark, I think you were next. It's just I want to reiterate that we follow the process. And Jim, whoever, to me, it sounds like we jumped the gun and made promises that we shouldn't. That we kind of rail that in because. I think the safety issue, and I've had my sidewalks repaired, and I understand that, and I've bought into a community and had sidewalks because I wanted them. But I want to make sure that when always when we're communicating with our residents that when we're meeting their expectations, we're giving them the best possible information. So that, that, that's just a concern of mine, because I know there are people that I spoke to, they feel that it's going to happen. I think it sprung out of the non-motorized pathway uh, that we did over uh, that fall. Anyhow, um, we're only talking about a grant application this evening. So is there anybody that objects to having this on the 7 o'clock consent agenda? Hearing none, this will be on the 7 o'clock consent agenda. Finally, we have a request to amend the telnet. This is pretty easy. It's a technical uh, adjustment if you've uh, read the back up. Uh, telnet put the wrong name down. It's really the subsidiary on their application. So we need to go back and, and approve it. Um, 
I'm giving you the short version. I, everybody understands it in the interest of time. <coughs> Uh, is there anybody that objects to this going on the 7 o'clock in the sense of chance? No. All right. We then have two people who wish to speak under communication. Mr. Um, Jones first. We ask you for brevity as we have a 7 o'clock meeting if you want to take the floor. Do I have five minutes? You have five minutes, sir. Okay. So if you can stay in the left, we would appreciate it. I'll try we have to people waiting in the other possible. room. Uh, and I'm sure you guys have all got my packet. Uh, uh, proposals and, and ideas. Um, this is one such I wanted to go over and uh, just review just so that you guys can have food for thoughts. If I understand, uh, on um, the 24th, there'll be something similar to this type of discussion on public safety. Okay. The project, Queens, uh, project Clean Sweep Mission Zero Prime Eight Mile uh, Border <laughs> Stabilization Effort. The eight mile border presents an enigmatic and dubious set of concerns to all the surrounding suburban presences that are facing Detroit. Times are tough and economic depression sets the tone for rising criminal behavior. Southfield City stands as a valid night in view of the rowdy ogre of chaos presented by the plight being faced in the Detroit city limits. This is an unfortunate state of affairs, yet be that as it may, there is no quick fix, but some mutually beneficial, both short and long term solutions are available. Project Clean Sweep. Mission Zero Crime Eight Mile is a vision for the reasonable understanding that the calamity in Detroit was due to a long history of corruption and mismanagement of resources, and that due to the fact that crime intentionally cannot be totally eliminated but managed or controlled is and is a response to the destitution and economic depravity of an area. Do I pose a variety of mutually beneficial prospects? For instance, at and around the Northland Shopping Center, the, uh, the majority of the youth from Detroit gather, and due to the lack of productive activities within the confines of Detroit, many of them are seeking outlets from life stressors beyond their control and the plain lack of opportunity. These realities are not their fault, nor did they create the conditions they were raised in or set the tone for the habits they may have developed along the way. The usage of marijuana or alcohol around the perimeter of the mall at best should be no more than a tickable offense. Jailing persons for such offenses bogs down the system and ties up officer time and activity from handling emergency calls, slowing down response time for higher priority encounters. Issuing tickets once paid can generate revenue through punishable offenses that are minor and in addition if warrants are posted to non-payment. Community service to keep Southfield clean is the most reasonable of options upon processing of such individuals. On a more progressive note, there are a variety of available real estate vacancies for the housing of a center at or around the Northland Shopping Center for the express purpose of a multiple platform facilitating the combination of recreational activities including sports and employment, locating venues, i.e. an unemployment center where youth can be connected with junior college enrollment, military recruitment for all branches, GD classes, and testing and guidance to centers to develop job skills with classes that deter drug use and promote safe sex. The aim of the law enforcement agency in the city of Southfield is obviously to maintain the safety of its citizens <coughs> and provide a hospitable environment for businesses to conduct their activities. However, law enforcement resources are limited as well due to today's pr present economic crisis. It, is my, it is seems logical that many of the youth surrounding the Northland Shopping Center could be trained and given employment by a city-sponsored security firm or inclusive entity that with its own liability coverage could assist the law enforcement agencies in monitoring and deterring potential criminal activity around the eight-mile border by putting these youth to work for Southfield's interests. Alongside as a component with that, within that very same entity, there could also be a department that works with the Parks and Recreation City Maintenance Department whereby youths are employed to keep every facet of Southfield immaculately clean and at the same time providing employment to disenfranchised youth. This program or entity cooperating with the city <coughs> can also function as a platform for persons whom having been issued a sentence of community service can complete their obligations and possibly retain an employment opportunity in either the security or custodial branch of that facility. In closing, it is a sound judgment for the effort to be acted out at some vacant business inside the Northland Shopping Center, i.e. J.C. Penney, or Nearby, as to be in close collaboration with Streamline Communications to assist SFPD at the North Bend Shopping Police Precinct to consolidate and coordinate activities with maximum efficiency. I, Mr. Jones, do so solemnly commit myself to such measures and would appreciate any and all recommendations and assistance whereby I can cooperate with whatever authorities to evoke such efforts. <coughs> I, having been one, one such disenfranchised youth, having dealt with the difficulties of the streets and the penal system nationwide, have a wealth of wisdom and tactical skills to draw from to catalyze and maintain the functionality of the above stated agenda. 
If a meeting can be scheduled for me to engage Police Chief Hawkins, Fire Chief Riley, and Sergeant Porter of the North Grand Police Precinct, and along with the city planners or other sponsors, uh, private or corporate donators, in collaboration with the Parks and Recreation Department, having the appropriate team assembled and enough philanthropic donated revenue, I can put my experiences yes, in real to be of service to my community to use productively, effectively, and in real time. I also had an idea that I wanted to do a game day, and I have uh, the, the uh, rental packet. You want to help me figure out how to do that. Um, I also had that in there when I sent you guys. So. Your time is up. Okay. Thank you. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Uh, real quickly, <coughs> the materials that you send us are it's very wordy. I think if you can break up some bullet points, it would be much not only more readable, but if we wanted to you know move this forward, it would be easier for us to kind of communicate what you want er, to to city staff. Okay, well, I mean, I've, fair? I've been trying to adapt and mold my agenda closer, right, to, right. closer to what but you guys are trying to see. We need bullet points. That's probably the best way for us to get information. Right. 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 You have bullet points rather than just a long narrative. We can pop, 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 read it right. um, Okay. In the interest of time, I want to move on, please. Um, uh, next, you, you have Mr. Harmon Gunther. Right uh, Mr. Gunther, your name and address for the record. Harmon Gunther, 1901, Michigan. And because we get to already 7 o'clock, I uh, ask to be moved to the next meeting. I can move you to the uh, next agenda. Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you.